Good evening, everyone. Welcome to worship tonight. For those of you joining us on our recorded service tonight, welcome to St. Paul Lutheran here in Anamosa. Thank you for choosing to worship with us, to pray with us here in this sixth week of Easter. We continue to gather as Christ's body in the world called together in that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that power that unites us as one people. And so, uh, welcome. I hope you had a good day, enjoyed this beautiful day. Let's just take a deep breath together as we gather tonight and allow ourselves to land here. Just let any busyness or stress from the day just kind of melt away at this time. So as a matter of announcements tonight, I uh, just want to tell you about a couple of things that are coming up. Uh, beginning Wednesday, June 1st, we are going to have Children's Church offered at this service. So don't be shocked when little ones are gathering downstairs with Linda Kenny, and, uh, and then they will come up and join us in our service following the sermon. But they're going to start out downstairs right from the get-go. And uh, just to break down that transition time. But that's an encouragement, an invitation for people to still come to worship in the summer with their kids. To have that opportunity uh, to have their kids formed in the Word along with Linda. Also, on June 5th, I hope you've seen this and are planning for it. We're going to have a new member picnic um, in the park following our outdoor service. Uh, lunch will be provided, we'll have some games, and it's really just an invitation for people to come together, spend some time together. Um, I know a lot of people have been longing to do that, but also it's a chance for us to see face-to-face -face some of those who have joined us as new members in the pandemic, and uh, Ron and Karen being a couple of them, and uh, some other, we're going to welcome three uh, new couples into the community on that day. So come and join us. And uh, if you're curious about it or if you want to RSVP and make sure you get a sandwich, uh, call Lois in the office and let us know you're going to be there, okay? So that's June 5th. Uh, the other thing that I want to invite us to do right now is just to take a moment, pray for our friend Barb Kleiss. Uh, she fell today, or yesterday, I'm sorry, and... Um, She's, she's hurting, and so let's, let's just pray together. She invited, she said I could do this, okay? Uh, loving God, we lift up to you, Barb, in a particular way tonight, just asking you to send your healing power into her to bring her some comfort and quick healing from her injuries. Let her know of our love for her as we pray together tonight. We pray in your son's name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's invite Lord to come forward and begin our worship together. I invite you to please stand as you are able. As we offer our praise with come, now is the time. Come, now is the time to worship. Come.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. We continue to proclaim this through these seven weeks of Easter as we live in the fullness. Seven remembers the number of perfection in numerology. And so we have seven weeks of seven days of Easter, remembering that we are powerful because Holy Spirit dwells among us. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ. We are a new creation for this saving ministry and for this water. Let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. As Janelle comes forward to pour our water into the font, we say together, we thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. In these waters, you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving now and forever. Amen. And so as we sing our next song, I invite any of you who would like, thank you, Jim, to come forward and to use these waters to remind yourself of your own baptism, whether you have a memory of it or not. Form a new memory tonight. Let this water touch your body as you are claimed again in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A restless generation Turning over every stone Hoping to find salvation In a world that's left as cold can we give back to the altar, back to the arms of our first love? There's only one way to the Father, and He's calling out to us. To the captive, it looks like freedom. To the orphan, it feels like home. To the skeptic, it might sound crazy. To believe in a God who loves. In a world where our hearts are breaking, and we're lost in the mess we made. Like a blind. It's the good news for us all It's greater than religion It's the power of the cross So can we get back to the altar Back to the arms of our first love There's only one way to the Father And He's calling out to us To the captive it looks like freedom To the orphan it feels like home To the skeptic it might sound crazy To believe in of the gospel is not that we can receive Jesus into our lives, but that he's already received us into his. In my own life, it means forgiveness when I know I deserve the fall. It called me out of the darkness, carried me to the cross. In a moment, my eyes were open, in my Looks like 
like freedom Just open, it feels like home To the skeptic, it might sound crazy To believe in a God who loves In a world where our hearts are breaking And we're lost in the mess we make Like a blinded light in the dead of night It's gospel, the gospel that makes a way It's a gospel Pray with me, Lord Jesus, we come here this evening to give you praise and glory as we think about our baptism and reconnect with our baptism. Let us know that that grace and that love that you poured down to us on that day is pouring down onto us in this place, in this time, in this moment, for it is the gospel that makes a way for each and every one of us to live a life according to your will to be loved to overflowing, to have forgiveness over and over again, a grace that pours into us. Help us to hear the words of the gospel in a new way tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to please be seated um, as we invite our reader to come forward to share God's word with us at this time. Good evening. Good evening. Tonight's first reading comes from Acts chapter 16, verses 9 through 15. That night, Paul had a dream. A Macedonian stood on the far shore and called across the sea, Come over to Macedonia and help us. The dream gave Paul his map. He went to work at once, getting things ready to cross over to Macedonia. All the pieces had come together. We knew now for sure that God had called us to preach the good news to the Europeans. Putting out from the har harbor at Troyos, we made a straight run for the Samthrace. The next day, we tied up at New City and walked from there to Philippi, the main city in that part of Macedonia, and even more importantly, a Roman colony. We lingered there several days. On the Sabbath, we left the city and went down along the river where we had heard there was to be a prayer meeting. We took our place with the women who had gathered there and talked with them. One woman, Lydia, was there from Thyatira and a dealer in expensive textiles known to be a, a God-fearing woman. As she listened with intensity it, to what was being said, the master gave her a trusting heart and she believed. After she was baptized, along with everyone else in her household, she said in a surge of hospitality, if you're confident that I'm in this with you and believe in the master truly, come home with me and be my guests. We hesitated, but she wouldn't take no for an answer. Word of God, word of life. Praise be to God. And together we say, God, God mark, mark us, us with, with grace, grace and blessing. blessing. Smile, the whole country will see how you work. All the godless nations see how you save. God, let people thank and enjoy you. Let all people thank and enjoy you. Let all far-flung people become happy and shout their happiness because you judge them fair and square. You tend the far-flung peoples, God. Let people thank and enjoy you. Let all people thank and enjoy you. Earth, display your exuberance. You mark us with blessing, O oh God, our God. You mark us with blessing, O oh God. Earth's four corners honor him. Tonight's second reading is the book of Revelations, chapter 21. He took me away in the spirit to an enormous high mountain and showed me holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God, resplendent in the bright glory of God. There was no sign of a temple, for the Lord God, the sovereign, strong, and the Lamb are the temple. Then the angel showed me water of life river, crystal bright. It flowed from the throne of God and the Lamb right down the middle of the street. 
the tree of life was planted on each side of the river, producing 12 kinds of fruit, a ripe fruit each month. The leaves of the tree are for healing the nations. Never again will anything be cursed. The throne of God of the Lamb is at the center. His servants will offer God's service. Worshiping, they'll look on his face, their foreheads mirroring God. Never again will there be any night. No one will need lamplight or sunlight. The shining of God, the Master, is all the light anyone needs, and they will rule with him age after age after age. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, Brenda. The Lord be with you. I invite you to rise for the proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Yeah, praised you, O Christ. Amen. <laughs> Jesus said, Because a loveless world is a sightless world. If anyone loves me, he or she will carefully keep my word, and my Father will love her. We'll move right into the neighborhood. Not loving means not keeping my words. The message you hear isn't mine. It's the message of the Father who sent me. I'm telling you these things while I'm still living with you. The friend, the advocate, Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send at my request, will make everything plain to you. Holy Spirit will remind you of all the things I have told you. I'm leaving you well and whole. That's my parting gift to you. Peace. Shalom. I don't leave you the way you're used to being left, feeling abandoned, even bereft. So don't be upset. Don't be distraught. You've heard me tell you I'm going away and I'm coming back. If you loved me, you would be glad that I'm on my way to the Father because the Father is the goal and purpose of my life. I told you this ahead of time before it happens so that when it does happen, the confirmation will deepen your belief in me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. How many of you have, well, I'm hoping that this doesn't lead to some PTSD, but how many of you have walked with somebody knowing that they were preparing to die. It's a pretty common experience, isn't it? When somebody tells us that, that news that we dread, that news that is horrifying to us, I'm dying or I'm going to die, how do we respond to that? How did you respond to that? If we're lucky, we have some time to spend with that person before he or she dies. When we reflect on that, perhaps it gives us some insight into what was happening in this gospel. Remember, it's good news. How is this good news for the disciples or for us tonight? As you think about how you responded when you learned that someone you love was going to die, was going to be taken away from you, was there a, a sense of fear, a sense of anxiety, 
anger, bartering. No, that can't be true. Was there a, a, a resistance to believing that it was possible, that it was actually happening? Was there a curiosity that rose up in you? It might be all of those at different times. What we see is that those kinds of emotions rose up in Jesus' disciples. Why? Because he told them, I'm going to be taken away from you. I'm going to die very soon. I'm going to be crucified. But I will go away and I will come back to you. But all they could hear was that you're going to be taken away from us, Jesus. You're going to leave us. You're going to abandon us. We're going to be left lost without our leader, without our friend, without our teacher. In particular, in this situation, this part of John's gospel, it's called the Last Supper Discourse. This is the, the time when Jesus spends with his disciples, teaching them what it means to love, this agape love that we were talking about. Showing them what it means, washing their feet, and telling them again and again and again, I'm going to my Father, but... Don't be so upset about it. You've seen the Father in me all along. But it comes out from the disciples in this series of questions. First Peter, then Thomas, then Philip. And now, tonight, Jesus is responding to Simon, not Simon Iscariot, or not Judas, I'm sorry, Judas, not Judas Iscariot. Judas, another apostle in the room, asks him, how can we know where you're going? What does this mean? You're going to leave us. And tonight we heard Jesus' response to them. Again, I'm going back to the Father, but I'm going to come back to you. You should be happy about this. Really happy in the midst of my sorrow and my anger and my fear? You should be happy because when I go to my Father, my life is going to be fulfilled. And we will send to you the one who will walk with you. Perikletos. The paraclete, Holy Spirit. He's preparing them to receive the one who will come into their lives and walk with them throughout all time into the future. How will Holy Spirit Take away their fear. Help them through their mourning by reminding them what Jesus taught them while he was with them. Alive. Those many ways that he acted out of love in their midst. The Holy Spirit will remind them why? So they can do the same. So they can be the church that Christ is calling them to be. The paraclete will walk beside you. That's the same promise that you and I are baptized into. This God who is with us, who walks beside us, who empowers us to make the loving choices, to get through our grief and our anxiety, and our suffering times, because we are not alone. And I know, I know those are just words, until we actually walk through those times and come to know the truth in our hearts, that in fact we are not alone, and that our God is with us especially in those times of brokenness, and hurt, and fear, and separation. We continue to look to our God. We continue to be open to that mysterious gift that Jesus gave his disciples at the Last Supper and 
the first time he met them after his resurrection, do you remember what he said to them? Peace. Shalom. Not peace as in just an absence of conflict. No harmony. No unity. No togetherness. Trust. Shalom. That is the peace. That is the gift that Jesus gives us through the presence of Holy Spirit. So the invitation, the encouragement for us is to continue to pray to Holy Spirit God. To use the name Holy Spirit when we name God. The one who is with us and empowers us. Sent by the Father and the Son. So this is good news. Regardless of what we're encountering right now, what a, regardless of the mess that we've encountered in the world, that we've made the world, isn't that the language that was in our song tonight? As we wandered through this time, dealing with this mess we've made, the good news is God is with us. And we, my friends, are encouraged to trust that God. So I had an unusual number of requests this week to tell the rest of the story about Timmy. The one I talked about last week in my class, my sixth grade class, the kid that everybody picked on. People wanted to know what happened to Timmy. Now, I need to tell you, that's not his real name. I made that name up to protect him because I know some of you are going to go back and search up my grade school pictures and try to figure out <laughs> who this kid is. I had to go back. I, I lost touch with Timmy after grade school because he went to a different high school than I did. But I contacted a couple of grade school friends that I'm still in touch with and found out that Timmy's story actually is really one filled with Tragedy and grace. I left you last week with this idea that Timmy was living agape love in a way that was, it was mysterious to me as a sixth grade boy. How a sixth grade boy could be raising his three younger siblings, feeding them, getting them to school, getting them dressed, taking care of them, helping his, his invalid dad and, and, and his depressed mom. It was a life that was beyond me. But what I found out is it caught up to Timmy eventually. In high school, once he, have, he didn't have to take care of his brothers, brothers and, brother and sisters as much anymore, he kind of, kind of got in with a group of people who introduced him to some things that were not healthy for him. And he started to act out a bit. He had some resentment and some anger. And it was like a newfound freedom for him to start to hang out with people. People who were like him. People who had a chip on their shoulder. People who were angry at the world. Angry at the situation. Angry at the childhood he had lost. He acted out. He got in trouble. As a young man... He spent a little time as a guest of the state here in Anamosa. But he learned through that experience. And I have this sense that, remember when I told you he liked coming to our grade school because when he heard about Jesus, he didn't feel so alone, so abandoned, so isolated? I think he remembered that while he was in prison. He remembered that he had a God, he had a Savior who did not abandon him in his times of trial and darkness. He started to, if you will, choose life. And when he got out of prison and returned back home, he stopped hanging out with those bad influence people. He had to. Or he would have been right back in the same behaviors. He learned that. But he also started to go to church. 
He started to go to church and he started to read the Bible and he started to learn about the faith that he had known as a child. And it showed him a different way of living. He swore off those substances that were destructive to him. And he started to connect with people in his faith community. He started to have those friends that he had hungered for as a grade school kid. I'm pleased to tell you, Timmy runs a successful contracting business, has for a number of years, 20 years now, and uh, he's still single. He's taking care of himself, but he takes care of other people as well. And he's a, a tremendous volunteer. I call it living out the baptismal promises. He's living that way because of the grace of God, because of the shalom, that gift of God, that promise that he learned was true, that the paraclete, the Holy Spirit was with him all along. And when he gave himself over to Holy Spirit, he found new strength. He found courage. He found direction. He found a community. He found what he was hungering for. And so there is good news. Good news when love is experienced, when love is shared. The love that is sacrificial, the love that is bigger, inclusive, hospitable, like Lydia, drawn to the word of God after hearing Paul preach, baptized, she opens her household to the needs of others. That's what happens in our hearts, isn't it? When we're touched by that gift of shalom, by that gift of the power of Holy Spirit, we find ourselves acting in ways that we are surprised about. And so as we continue our prayer tonight, let's be a little bit surprised tonight when we come forward for this gift of the altar, this gift of the table, this gift of love that comes to us from our God. Let ourselves not just see the routine or the ritual one more time to put our hands out and receive the bread and say amen, but let's be surprised by the power that surges in us when we commune with our loving God. I invite you to please stand as you are able. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not fly in desperate. Turn to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ. down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my 
our faith in the words of the Nine Seed Creed we say together <clears throat> we, we believe, believe in one God, God the Father, the Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only Son of God eternally begotten of the Father God from God light from light true God from true God begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we invite Beth to come forward to lead us in our prayers of the church, I ask you to think about your own lives, those people, those situations that you would like to join to the prayers of the church tonight especially draw to mind those times when you have been called to walk with somebody in a time of trouble. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, in all of creation. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected ways your spirit is at work. Guide bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in their visioning, partnership, and planning. Surrender us with your peace. God, in your mercy. Give a vision of increase and abundant harvest for farmers, laborers, and gardeners who are beginning their growing season. Join their efforts with the goodness of creation to feed all living things. God, in your mercy. Amen. Shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations when those in power seek to assert dominance over others. 
confound their ways and make them yield to your humble authority. God, in your mercy. Give safe haven to those who seek healing, liberation, or peace, especially Barb Kleiss, Karen Hubler, sister of Dolores Albrecht. Create places filled with hospitality where hurting people find your loving presence and wholeness. God, in your mercy. Uphold the work of ministries and organizations in our communities who assist people experiencing homelessness, citizens returning from prison, and all marginalized people. Accomplish your will through their, their efforts. God, in your mercy. Amen. We pray that good energy and good vision be experienced at the Synod Assembly this week. God, in your mercy. Assemble your people at rivers, streams, and fonts, where we remember our baptism and welcome others into the communion of saints. Gather us with those who have died when we meet together at your river of life. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Thank you very much. Take a moment to share with those around you the sign of Christ's peace. So this shalom shalom that we share this gift from God is just one of the things that we praise God for tonight we also praise God with gratitude for the treasure the time the talent that flows through us here at St. Paul thank you all for sharing those gifts with others in the community to build other people up with your treasure your time and your talents for all of these things let us join together in praying. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal to show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places praise you. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever living God. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord. For he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin. Who by his death has destroyed death. And by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection. With earth and sea and all their creatures. And with the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim. We praise your name and join their unending hymn.
And so we remember this meal of love as we sing together, Remember Now My Children. The night of his And so we do share our lives together with God above as we say the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty for love, come and eat.
you please stand? body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. My friends, let us pray together. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord be with you. The blessing of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, fill you with courage, heal and uphold you, and keep you from harm today and always. Amen. We send you out as if you're alive and breathing. We are called to praise the Lord.
even if you don't have the beat and you don't know what's going on and Bar Place is gone and it makes it way harder to sing that song. But we keep praising the Lord. So we send you out today to have that joy each and every day to praise the Lord, whether you're singing off key or you're singing not with the beat, it's good to go. And we say, I'm going to have you go a couple more slides because we just skipped that. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we go into the world to creatively connect intentionally grow and joyfully serve thanks be to god and all god's people said amen come back on sunday outside we'll have it much better that time have a wonderful week Shalom.
last night. She way up, they had two filters. But it's what I was told. Yeah. So I, no, I had everything up and running Great. Sunday. Great. And that's kind of back and forth. And then they, when I was coming to church, they were filtering people, so they were filtering it in. And one of them 